In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve nautical air miles, nautical ground miles problems on the Pulley's CRP5 flight computer. Here's the relationship of nautical air miles, nautical ground miles, true airspeed, and ground speed. Normally, we would solve for one of these variables by substitution into this equation. Now, the CRP5 allows us to do that without really going into the calculation. If you were using the calculation method to solve for nautical air miles problems, you can use the CRP5 as a check or vice versa. And here's how we will substitute these variables into the CRP5. What we will do is we will put all the ground stuff on the outer scale of the CRP5 and all the air stuff on the inner scale of the CRP5. So if we know what the nautical ground miles are, we'll put it on the outside scale of the CRP. And if we know what the nautical air miles are, we'll put it at the bottom scale of the CRP and for ground speed and true airspeed. And what I mean by this is, for example, if I know what my ground speed are and I don't know what my true airspeed are, then I would read ground speed on the outer scale and my true airspeed on the inner scale. And we will do that for nautical ground miles and nautical air miles as well. Okay, so we're going to read nautical ground miles on the outside and nautical air miles on the inside. So you'll probably have to come back to this front part of the video just to get this portion again, but I will demonstrate how to go through one set of values. Let us assume that we have a true airspeed of 150 knots and a wind component of minus 30 knots. And minus 30 knots or a negative wind component basically means you have a headwind and it slows you down. Therefore, it is subtractive. So we know that our true airspeed is 150 knots and the wind component is negative 30. True airspeed, we're going to put it on the inner scale and we just happen to have 150 on the inner scale. Now, 150 minus 30, so we have true airspeed of 150, but applying the subtractive correction of 30 knots, our ground speed would be 120. So again, true airspeed of 150 nautical miles goes in inner scale, and our ground speed of 120 nautical miles goes in the outer scale. We line these two up so that we can solve for nautical air miles and nautical ground miles. One of these would normally be the unknown, and it can be either one. Let's say we want to know for a certain ground miles how many air miles we would have flown. Then we would look for nautical ground miles on the outer scale, however many we are interested in finding out for, and we would read the corresponding value for nautical air miles. Let's say we covered 100 nautical ground miles. Ground miles is found on the outer scale, and the corresponding value for air miles will be found on the inner scale. So for 100 ground miles, we would have covered 120, almost 125 ground miles. We need to make some assumptions here. You need to be able to be adaptive and say, for example, well, that's also true for if we were to cover 10 ground miles, we would have flown 12 and a half air miles or a thousand and that would be 1250. So uh, this is where some common sense comes in. You need to know roughly what your conversions are. And that's all there is to it. So in our problem, given 150 knots with a wind component of negative 30 knots, if we flew 100 ground miles, that would be equivalent to 125 air miles and vice versa. So if we didn't know the ground miles, but we knew how many air miles was covered, we covered 125 air miles, well that would equate to covering the distance of 100 miles on the ground. And since this is a sliding scale, all these values would be correct. And that's all there is to it. 